Hi everyone. We are going to focus on black and white images today, which is going to be a little bit of fun. I'm going to talk about what images are best converted to black and white images and what images you might not convert to black and white because of the, the different tones throughout them and obviously the different details that you have. So I can see there's a few people joining us, someone from Scotland, hi. If you are joining me, let me know where you're from. I do love to see where you're all located. Good and morning, Susan Sawyer. Good morning, Mum. So yeah, it is Friday. It's um, It's been a very fast week. And I just said to Garrett before, I can't believe it's already Friday again. And then we just had our accountant in the office and he said it's only six weeks until um, the end of the financial year here in Australia. And we we're like, what? This is not <laughs> happening. Um, it is crazy how, how quickly the time has gone, but throughout the past eight weeks, and it is today, eight weeks that we've been going live here in the group every weekday, and it's made this time go so fast for us. I'm hoping that it's helped you get through this time and um, given you something to sort of think about and focus on for your business. But yeah, today we were just looking at the date going, this is crazy how quickly the, the, the past eight weeks have actually gone and this year for um, as well. So yeah, it's kind of crazy. But black and white images um, are one of my favorites. I adore them. But there are only certain images that I convert to black and white. And for different reasons, which is what I'm gonna go through with you in a moment, I've got um, a folder of, of photos, some of my favorite photos. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about which ones I would convert and which ones I wouldn't convert. Once upon a time, um, I used to convert pretty much all of the photos in my client galleries to black and white. And I would always give them the color option, obviously, as well. But I was I was so in love with black and white, but I didn't I I wasn't paying attention to which images should be black and white, which images look better as black and whites. So for me it's all about contrast and it's about light and giving images just that little bit of um, oh, I don't know what it is, you know, when you when you convert the words I suppose that I'm looking for, but there are, there are certainly images that uh, just don't give you that feeling as a black and white um, compared to others. So I think that's really important as well. I then went from converting all of my images in a gallery to black and white to only half of the images to black and white. And, uh, and it was funny because my clients would order their, you know, their, their prints and they would never choose the black and white options. And that made me sort of start to realize that Possibly black and whites aren't for everyone, that's okay. So I always give people the option, but if I shoot um, something and I'm already visualizing at the time of capture that it's going to look like an amazing black and white, then I will always convert it to black and white and share the color version as well with my clients because again, it all does come down to personal preference. And in their home, they might not have any black and white things and they might have a very colorful space and they might just prefer color. So um, always consider that when you are converting, converting your client images to black and white because again it is going to always come down to personal preference. So yeah. We've got lots of people joining us. We're up to 52 so far. Fantastic. Hi everyone so for people a Friday. From all over the world. We've got Tokyo, Guessing. California, Poland, South Fantastic. Africa. Guessing it's not Friday everywhere just yet or very, very early if it is. Yes, all right. So I'm gonna share my screen with you here. And then I said I've got a folder open with some images. So these are just some photos that I've, um, I've pulled together to show just a little bit of variety there in terms of which ones I think are gonna look better as black and whites and which ones wouldn't. So you can see there's a little bit of difference in color some more sort of muted pastel colours and then there's some that have got, uh, you know, some features like headbands and things like that. Look at that gorgeous face. So this is a photo I'm looking at. I could easily convert that to black and white, but it's not one that I would, I would, you know, based on whether or not it 
you know, it would suit it as a black and white. I wouldn't, you know, if I was going to convert it to black and white, it would just be for the sake of converting it to black and white. It's not an image that I would look at and go, this is going to make a stunning black and white. Because of the, the headbands and things like that, I tend to personally steer clear of um, images that do have things like that. Like even this one, it's got colour detail in the bonnet. So I would steer clear of that in terms of a um, black and white purely because I've actually styled it based on colour tone. So for me, it's always going to be a colour image. But if my client came back to me, for example, with that image and said, oh, could, could you possibly convert that to black and white? I would say, absolutely. So it's, it, it would have to come from them as a directive, not something from me. And it's the same with something like this down here. It's been styled um, in a way that it's all about the colour and the tone throughout those different colours there. The other thing here is it would make a beautiful black and white because of the contrast between the highlights and the shadows. It would make it a really beautiful black and white. but when I would convert that to black and white, I would lose a lot of the warmth that the, the brown tones within the beer give the image. So sometimes you've kind of got to make that judgment. And if you're not sure, convert an image to black and white and have a look at it. So this one over here, it's got a lot of, um, you know, sort of brown, green, warm, earthy tones in the background not an image I'd convert to black and white because it's those tones that really make this image um, what it is. And then coming down here, now we start to look at sort of more um, single toned images where there's not a lot going on. So with this one here, the, the background, um, the middle ground and the foreground are all quite similar in their tone. So I would definitely, um, you know, convert this one to black and white because I think it would bring a whole new level to this image because of the simplicity to it. So we'll open that one up in a minute. This one here again, I think it would make a lovely black and white, but I, but personally, the colors and the tones have been chosen by my clients. So I'm going to keep it as a color image as well. Coming down here, these more close-up ones. Now that's something I would convert to a black and white because it's more about the face, it's more about the, the beautiful skin, and you could really bring out some detail there in those highlights and shadows. Um, Shannon's got a question there about the whole, you know, when to convert. Do you think sometimes people buy the colours as they think that they can throw a filter on them, you know, <laughs> as they do these days, um, and make it black and white themselves? Obviously, this only applies to digital Do you know, files. that was something that I used to always consider um, when people would, would buy those colour images. I, was, I would be like, oh, are they going to do it themselves? I actually used to make a, a point of saying, you know, I have converted some of your files to black and white and I've included them for you because I would much rather, you know, create a beautiful black and white image for them, which would probably take me 30 seconds, than them do that, if, if that was the case. So it's um, because I used to be quite concerned about that as well. And then I would always put into the information that I would give my clients to to please when sharing your photos. And that's why I pre-prep my images for social media. When I give them a USB, they get the social media files as well. So that they're, you know, the color space has been converted, they've been resized for web, all of that kind of stuff. But um, with the PDF, the information that I give them, I would always sort of, you know, include in there, you know, please don't add any filters from, from social media apps as it can change the look and quality of the photo. So yeah, it is, um, but there are going to be people out there that do it and it is a shame. Unfortunately, we're never going to be able to prevent that with, you know, living in a digital world. So it is just more of, I suppose, that conversation that you've got to have with, have with them and, um, and communicate with them as well, but yeah. So yeah, definitely one I would do. This one again, it, it does actually um, speak really loud to me as a black and white because it's backlit, you've got those beautiful um, highlights coming through there and then you've got those gorgeous shadows. So that's another one we'll open as well. And the same for these ones down here, I definitely would not convert this one to black and white because of all of those 
you know, deep mauve purple tones that have been chosen to go with the little pink outfit. So that image has been set up and created because of the colours um, that are in there. Mm -hmm. And it is already quite dark and moody. It probably would look quite nice as a black and white, but yeah, the, the colour is what actually does does it for that image and then this one it's already very dark I feel those brown earthy tones that are in there if I did convert this to a black and white they'd go quite dark and you would lose um, you know that, that the warmth of the image and it would look more like just a baby kind of sitting on a on a dark background and then you would lose a little bit of the um, you know the impact that the the tie of the bonnet and the, the texture of the bonnet also have as well. So yeah, I definitely would not convert that one. Um, so w the reason I'm, I'm going through all these photos and I'm mentioning it is again, it's personal preference and it's the way that you have captured that image to start with. A lot of thought process goes into the styling and the setup. It's a lot of communication between you and your client. So you know if you are uns unsure at all in terms of black and whites ask your clients you know are black and white images something that you um you know you enjoy you like you know prefer mm. so it's just that communication that you've got to have with your clients but yeah for me i personally prefer going with more simple images so that the black and white gives the baby the impact when we talk about baby photos but I do often convert my, my family portraits to black and white um, when I'm taking photos of uh, parents holding their baby. Sometimes it's easier um, to do them as black and whites when there's a lot of different skin, <laughs> skin differences, um, especially if mum's had a lovely spray tan and the baby's got beautiful fair pink skin and she's orange. That was something I learned very quickly when we were doing the Baby Summit event photos. <laughs> Just make them all black and white and they'll look beautiful. <laughs> Don't worry about all those iridescent colours on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the only reason that we convert those photos to oh, no, black I'm and white. I'm not a photographer, I'm just lazy. <laughs> um, but do you know what? Uh, those family portraits that I take of parents holding their baby, you know, they're very intimate photos. So there's no, there's not a lot of styling. Um, a lot of the, the colours that we use are, are greys and blacks and people tend to wear a lot of black when they come for a shoot. So it is easier to convert those ones to black and white and they do create great impact. All right, so let's go ahead and open these up in Photoshop. Now I have um, Photoshop Actions and I have Lightroom presets for black and white, which make the job ridiculously easy. But what I'm gonna show you is a few little tips on converting your photos to black and white manually. I always do this at the end of the edit uh, sometimes if I'm shooting specifically for a black and white, then I will convert it to black and white right at the very beginning. So it, it just depends on the image. But I, I don't do a lot of images that are just plain black and white. Maybe some of my award images, but um, the majority of them are, are, are colour. And then the black and white um, is just that option. Alrighty, so if we have a look at our photograph here, and I'm looking at my histogram here, I've obviously got you know lots of detail there in my highlights, and I've got lots of detail there in my shadows. So when I'm when I'm converting an image to black and white, I don't want it to just look grey and flat. I really want to use the contrast in the image, the information that's in that file, to really push those details to bring them out, so that I've got blacks, I've got whites, and I've got greys. And, um, and really sort of pushing them there. If you created an adjustment layer, a hue and saturation adjustment layer, here we go, and you just brought down the saturation, come on Photoshop, there we go. Now, if you have a look at that, that looks really quite flat and just yuck to me it's not it's not giving it that punch that it needs so I'm going to take a snapshot of that and we'll come back to it so when I'm converting my images to black and white I'll often just create a copy layer command J and I'll come up to image down to adjustments and then I'm going to come down where am I going down here to gradient map I should have put my glasses down here 
Now we don't want a black photo. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna click here on my basics and you're gonna have different black and white options in here. So I'm gonna click on my black and white option and go okay. So I'm gonna, no, it's okay. I'm just gonna take another snapshot and if you go back to desaturating in your hue and saturation, and then obviously using your black and white option in your gradient map, it's going to create a, um, a completely different look there. So that's a great way to convert your images to black and white. It's like now, it gives you more tonal range. Like. Yeah, it does. It just adds that little bit of contrast mm. in there for you. Okay, so if that's what I'm going to do as my base black and white, but now I really want to give it some, you know, oh, I'm just going to turn my brightness up there so I can see that a little bit better. Um, I, now what I want to do is really give it some, some detail. So I'm going to take it into Curves, Command-M, and this is where you can start to play um, with the information here. So if you want to bring down your highlights, you can. Um, but what I like to do is, you can see where the information finishes there in my histogram, I like to push my highlights and my, my shadows. And when I said before, you know, you want blacks, whites and greys in there, do be careful when you are pushing those highlights that you aren't going to lose detail in a lot of those areas. So for example, if I move my little slider down here and we'll wait for that to, you can already see there how much it's pushed the information in the file. Now if I hold the option key in and come back over here, you can see that little hot guide there where I'm now losing info. So if I'm going to print that photo, it's not going to print anything. And the same goes for your blacks. You do want blacks, and you can see that there's blacks in the photograph down by the hair and um, in those shadowy areas. But now that I've pushed those blacks, what's going to happen is it's going to print a black blob on, on my paper. So when I'm providing my clients with a print, I want to provide them with the best quality print that I possibly can. And that means keeping detail in all of those areas. So whilst I've pushed those highlights and shadows on the, you know, throughout the entire image there, the baby's face for me now is starting to look like I really want it, you know, where I want it to be. So this is where you have control using, a, you know, adjustment layers um, with masks and being able to only paint on what you've just done to the areas that you need it to be to give it that punch that you're looking for and avoid those areas like hair and those really dark shadows so that you're not, you know, um, losing all of that detail in those areas. So that's why it's a great idea to use that guide so that you can see where you are losing information. But for me, when I am pushing my blacks and whites, I'm not going to push them that far. <laughs> so we'll bring them back. So I've got lots of detail there. And then in my shadows, I tend to kind of stick around with babies to not make it too heavy, around sort of 12. There we go. So I'll just click OK. And this is where I will add a layer mask and I'm going to invert it and take it. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> because I didn't merge those other layers. But what I can do now, um, let's go back a step. And we'll do those curves again. I'll get this a little bit of a treat for you. Get to see it done twice. <laughs> Too busy talking. Uh, okay. Cassie says here that she uses her black and whites to upsell her clients when they go for the whole gallery. Perfect. and tells them that she'll throw in the complete gallery in black and white. So that ma makes them kind of feel as though they're getting, you know, double Amazing. For, for, you know, the yeah. same price. It's a, it's a great technique. And some people will really love those black and whites, but just be careful converting all of your images to black and white because not all of them will look great. So, um, you know, they should be those really special punchy photos. All right, so I've got my mask there and I've inverted that layer so I'm going to paint this on now, and I don't always paint it on at 100%. I paint it on at a bit lower opacity, depending on the image and the detail. So this is where I can really start to, to push that contrast. I am going to avoid the legs down here where it was really bright. Um, but what I might do is just sort of come in around the edges there, around the toes just to give it that little bit of extra thing. And I'll put the backslash key on, you can see where I've painted there. 
Okay, so if I turn that off, you can see just that extra depth that it gives that photograph. But you do have to be careful, you can create some banding. Um, if, you've, if the information in the file is um, quite poor in terms of quality so and you can run into some other issues as well but yeah when you look at that so we've got before and after and it just really does add that depth to it nice bit of punch yeah, yeah. so we'll take another snapshot and we'll go back through them so we've got desaturating using our gradient map and then just adding that little bit of extra mm. extra something something all right so let's go over to this image and you know I have like I said quite a few black and white actions and when we look at actions there are going to be a lot out there for you to choose from there's going to be different styles different tones in black and whites you're going to have some warmer ones some cooler ones and so forth so it just depends on the look that you are going for not always um, do those certain sort of colored black and whites with those tones work with an image. So I'm going to, um, I've got rich black and white, warm black and white, obviously knowing which ones are going to be my favorites, my go-tos here. But for this image, I really want to give it some punch. So I'm actually going to go with my rich black and white. And look at that. It's just made it such a, it, obviously I've got some adjustment layers there I can play with, but if we go back and forth, um, we've created basically a different image. Bring this up. So there's quite a few different layers there for you to work with, and it's just a, love turning them on and off and having a look at where, um, where they work and where they don't within the image. So, and you can also, you know, turn some layers on and things. But yeah, that I'm looking at my histogram here now, and I'm very, very close to losing the detail. The hair for me is sitting quite dark there, so that's where I would either bring the opacity of that layer back or invert it and only paint it onto certain areas. But yeah, I'm just going to bring that right down. Um, and then we've got this one down here, which is a little bit darker in terms of those details, so we can just bring that back a bit as well. And then brighten, brighten up, I'm going to invert that, and what I'm going to do is paint that on, add a bit of a lower opacity over here to the face to kind of bring out some of those little details there too. Um, Mandy Meadows has got a question here. What's your thoughts on tonal black and whites? I've seen filters that give like a blue tone. Yeah, I've got some of those um, here and I'll, I'll play those for you as well because, you know, it's some work, some don't. Yeah. And you know what, if you are providing your client with digital files, if they've, if you've, you know, got packages that come with the digital files in terms of product, Obviously, the way that you print and the products that you order, they're going to be printed to the, the best possible standards. The thing is, then when you give that digital file, if it's, if it's in there, that, that toned black and white, and then they decide that they're going to print it at a really cheap lab, anything, <laughs> could, anything could happen depending on the amount of tone that you've got in there. So you do really have to be careful with those. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of really happy with where that's at now. So I'm actually going to take a snapshot and um, and then we'll go. Amy has asked if the black and white actions are on sale. Yes, they are. Yeah, everything pretty and much is. And <laughs> So I've come back to the original file there and now we've got this slate one. So let's press play on that and you can see it's got that kind of silver blue tone to it. And whilst it looks great to me, it might not look great to my clients. My clients go, well, that's not black and white. Why mm. is it blue? So be careful when you are adding tone and always make it really subtle. So when you start to look, you can adjust those tones down here and bring those back as well. Yeah, it's funny, sometimes you don't see it until they're like beside another black and white photo. Like you go to hang it on the wall next to the other black and white that you've got and you're like, oh, why is it blue? Yeah. You know, but at the time though it looks great for the photo and you've done an awesome job of editing it as a great tonal black and white but then you put it beside the other one that you've got hanging on the wall already and it's absolutely yeah, different um so that's before with the other one and then this is a different black and white all together and it does have that little bit of um haziness to it that matte look as well so 
this all comes down to personal preference. So if you're known for creating you know, black and whites like this and you've got a certain style to your editing and this is the thing, it takes a while for you to build your own style and have confidence in the way that you edit your photos and what you share to give your clients an understanding of what they can expect. So um, it's, it's something that, yeah, you need to decide how you want your photographs to look on your personal preference just make sure when you are editing them that you're taking into consideration obviously your clients needs and wants but also the the overall final quality of the file and how it's going to be printed as well okay so let's have a look now at this other image over here and um, and yeah let's go dark and moody oh. A little bit too dark <laughs> <laughs> so we can pull back that uh, that darken layer there and then we've got a little bit of contrast so that might be where I invert that layer and now paint that on increase that a bit increase that so I really make that baby come out and then we've got our little light and layer here and I'm going to invert that. I might just bring the opacity of that up a bit. And then what you can do is just add a little bit of brightness to some of these darker areas. And I know that it's going to print well because I can see the histogram there is giving me lots of detail. Showing me lots of detail, sorry. cool thing about seeing you use these actions is actions are there to, to speed up your workflow but it's up to you to customize it mm -hmm. paint it on and off where it's needed you know add your own um, look and style to it like when you you're editing you're always about making the baby stand out or the subject yeah. you know it doesn't matter what what it is but it's always you know does that baby stand out so this one's got this little moody tone here which has got like a uh, again like a a darker um, sort of silver tone and I'm just going to bring that back because it was just a little bit too much so we can take a snapshot of that one and we've got before and after so sometimes you can create such a different look with converting your images you just have to um, play and, and try to retain as much information and detail as you possibly can what I'm going to do real quick now is open up one of these images. Um, let's go with, we'll go with this pink one. And I'm going to do it manually. Command J. I'm going to come up here to image adjustments, down to gradient map. And then convert that to black and white. So you can see now we've got those little headbands on there, but the I, if, if they didn't have the headbands, I would definitely convert this to black and white. Mm. But the headbands don't look that great as black and white because you can see the detail there and the different tones, but there's no color to separate that detail to, to really bring it to life. So I think when you are converting images like that, just be careful obviously of um, that final result. Alrighty, so we've got a few different looks that we've gone through. We've got any more questions there? Um, we've got Mary. Mary actually makes a good point. She tries to get it right in camera. So, you know, to avoid the editing process because she's using Photoshop elements, she can't use things like actions. Um, so she's afraid to make the, the switch, but she'd love to use the actions. I say go for it. Do you know Photoshop <laughs> now, the changes and how, you know, the features that it has is, is really amazing. Mm -hmm. You know what, if you're comfortable in terms of your capture and the amount of time that you spend editing your photos in Elements, then stick with it. Do you know what I mean? If that works for you, you do that. But when you open your world up to so many more possibilities, um, that can really speed up your, um, your processes, then you know, you're going to allow yourself so much more time. To, to do other things. And that's the thing, I love Photoshop, I love editing. It is um, 
but it's also something that I don't want to spend hours upon hours doing for my client galleries. So that's why it is important to get it right in camera. Make sure that you've got all of the information in your file that you need to be able to really polish it for your clients because at the end of the day, we stay in business because we can create a product and service that our clients can't create for themselves. So that's how you stand out, that's how you um, you, you remain in a necessity for your clients to document their families. But yeah, bringing your photos to life um, in black and white, make sure that they're not dull, grey and flat <laughs> like that, <laughs> and uh, not, um, you know, not obviously losing detail. So keep an eye on that histogram when you are shooting, keep an eye on your histogram when you are editing, and have some fun. Yeah. Um, David's got a question there. Are you sharing actions, Kelly? They are on newbornposing.com under yes. the editing section. There's um, many in there, there to play with. And this is not a selling actions. It's just how I convert my images to black and white. And I wanted to share that with you. Mm -hmm. So we've gone through a manual process, step by step. And then we've uh, gone through what you can do when you play with different actions to create different look and feel. But yeah, it is Friday and... I'm done. <laughs> that was a nice quick one compared to all of the others. Next week, um, I'm actually not going to go live every day. I've decided to, you know, eight weeks of going live every weekday has, um, has been amazing. I've loved every second of it and it's been so fun creating some pretty cool things and sharing a lot with you. I do hope that it has helped in some way, shape or form, just even something small, or just even, you know, encouraged you to look at your business um, in a different way. So when we, you know, I'm, it's not that I'm not going to go live next week, I will. I'm just gonna create a bit of a different schedule and it won't be every day. So you, it's, you're not losing me, I'm still going to be here. I think it's just time for Garrett and I to plow ourselves into a few other things because whilst you only see me for one to two hours a day, this pretty much takes up about four to five hours of my day every day at work. So, um, and then obviously the stuff that I do at home as well. So don't forget, if you haven't caught all of the lives, um, and there are so many, <laughs> there are literally, I think at the end of last week it was 33, so there's another five on there, so there's almost 40 videos that we have done over the past eight weeks of free content for you. It's still in the videos section of the group. They are still under the announcements section. So to find those, you just literally scroll to the top of the group or use the search bar if there's something that you're looking for. The other way that you can find the, that free content is on my YouTube channel. You've just got to type in Kelly Brown and I'll come up somewhere. So yeah, it is Mother's Day on Sunday. Um, to all of the amazing mums in our group, happy Mother's Day um, if you're celebrating it this Sunday because I know it's different in some parts of the world. Enjoy that day, I know I will with my beautiful family, and I will see you next week at some point. Take care everyone, bye.